Hi there. Today I am coming to you from in front of the area where I paint large canvases. And the reason I'm doing that is because this is an area where I've, I've really been struggling lately to get back to my big canvases and to um, just kind of be more expressive in my art versus kind of smaller and more cramped and all of that. Uh, but it does take pushing forward. And here's, here's what I want to talk about today is I had to revisit this because it's like, okay, what of my limiting beliefs? What am I believing that isn't true? And why can't I paint on these large canvases? In fact, I have a whole set over here of, of these portraits that I had started like six or eight months ago that I just am like, ah, I can't do anything. So I thought if I am struggling and believing things that aren't true, that maybe this would be a help to some of you as well. And some of these, like right today, I'm maybe not struggling with, but of kind of being a creative, making art, even calling myself an artist, which, you know, I make art every single day. And, you know, I still don't feel like I can call myself an artist. I, it, other people can do that. But when I do it, I feel like, oh, I'm a phony, I'm a fraud. So that is one limiting belief right there. If you are making art any at any form, in any capacity, you are an artist. And it's not like... There should be shame around that or there should be some kind of, oh, I'm an artist, you know, kind of thing. So um, that is, I guess I was, that wasn't even on my list. <laughs> I just, there you go. There's a freebie for you. So one of the things that early on was a, a real limiting belief for me was that I was too old. I did not take my first art class. Uh, and I don't even know if I'd call it an art class um, until I was 50 years old. Before that, I would say I was, you know, it's kind of creative. I never drew or um, painted or anything like that. I would, I'd make handmade cards. Um, I'd cut things, maybe like a precursor to collage. But when I was 50, I was like, oh, I was watching these, even back 10, 11 years ago, there were, you know, YouTube videos and I would watch things and I'm like, I'm going to take this class. I'm going to learn how to do this. And it was like simple collage and using craft paint and all of that. So here's the thing. I would not have thought 10 years ago, 11 years ago, that I would be here today, that I would ever have even imagined painting on a very large canvas or anything, or even considering to call myself an artist. So I'm just saying, I just want you to know you're never too old. Like, okay, what's gonna, you're, you're gonna age, you're gonna be 10 years older in 10 years anyway. So you can either like, like watch TV or you can learn how to paint. I mean, you know, like the, the time will pass regardless of whether or not, um, no matter how old you are. So I just would encourage you, if you are even remotely close to my age, that you do not let age be a factor. I mean, obviously, you know, there is, uh, yeah, so enough of that, right? Um, but I had a limiting belief like, whoa, I'm too old to do all this stuff. This will be kind of a little, little thing on the side. And of course, it is a little thing on the side, but it has become more than that for me. It has become a big piece and a big part of my life that I never would have known had I not taken that first online class. So um, leading into that, I will say the other limiting belief I have is that I don't have any formal education. I actually, I'm going to be <laughs> brutally honest here. I have never actually taken an in-person art class. So there's a wealth of um, on online classes and different teachers and things. In fact, I have done a video on that, that are my favorites, but I have never actually been in person and maybe I'm scared. Maybe I'm chicken. I don't, I, I don't really know. Um, I just have always taken them on, on online. Um, I, I would like to take an in-person class, I think at some point, and I don't feel like you ever stop learning, right? Like there's always more to learn. There's always another technique or a skill. And I'm not saying that you just bounce from one thing to the next. You still have to develop yourself. You still have to kind of put in the time, but I don't feel like you're ever arrived. You just kind of keep, it's just like, okay, I'm learning this. Now I'm doing this. And oh my gosh, that is so awesome over there. So but the fact that you don't have a formal education in art holds you back from being the creative person that you were meant to be. Um, and I also believed another, a side note for that was that really only art was representational, like, you know, art that was of something. Now, I will say I do a lot of um, portraits and figures, as well as abstracts. So but I do not do realistic 
rep representational work. I don't do, you know, landscapes or, um, although that could be, you know, maybe an abstract landscape, depending on how you look at it, but just images of vases or flowers. I mean, I have done some of that and I do like it, but that's not necessarily my style. So what I'm saying is, Art isn't, doesn't have to look just one way either. I, in my mind, it's like, oh, to be a real artist, you actually can sketch out something um, and make it look like, you know, like you can sketch out that little, you know, deer and it looks like a deer or I can't do that. I, that's not, <laughs> but I, nor do I want to. That is a skill you can learn. So what I'm saying is you don't need a formal education, but you do need to follow the path that you are interested in. If you are interested in learning to paint realistically or to sketch, you know, perfectly, then there are classes and ways to learn that. You do not need a formal education for that. So whatever it is that you're interested in, follow that path because that is your specific original, you know, creative journey. Another limiting belief um, that I have actually is kind of ongoing um, is that I'm not good enough. Like, oh, you know, so-and-so, their stuff is so good and I wish I'd painted more like them or um, I just, I'm not as creative or I'm not talented or, you know, I don't have original thoughts or ideas or whatever. Um, but, you know, the more I think about it, we're, we're all actually, you know, whether you want to call it artist or creative, whatever, um, you know, we get dressed. Like what I'm wearing, I like these duller colors. You know, I like certain things. Whether you're getting dressed, whether you, how you cook, whether you're gardening, you know, there are a million and one creative ways to live your life. Decorating your house, cutting some flowers for a vase or buying them at Trader Joe's and putting them in a the vase. Um, these are all creative acts that are part of who we are. So we're all original. We all have creativity, whether we call ourselves a creative or not. So you are good enough and um, you are on your unique path and it's not like anybody else's. And so I have to keep reminding myself of that too when I think, ah, I'm not good enough and blah, blah, blah. So another limiting belief is, oh, I'm just going to embarrass myself or, I mean, I'm just going to fail at whatever I make. Nothing's going to be, you know, like any good. So this haunts all of us, I feel like, to a certain degree, right? I can't paint the way I want. I can't, but it's part of the process is just keep going, keep going, keep going. And I listened to this podcast and I wish for the life of me, I could remember who it was that said this, but he was talking about like, your goal should be to fail a hundred times. Because if you do something and fail a hundred times, you are going to score big. You're going to, just by the act of virtually doing it a hundred times, you are, you're, you're going to win it at, at, at some level, right? You're, you, you know, you're going to get accepted into that one thing. So I really took this on a few years ago um, and decided I'm going to, I didn't get quite to a hundred. I, I don't even know if I got to 30, but I decided I was going to embrace this. Like, okay, I'm going to fail at all these things. I'm going to apply. I was um, sending my art and entering um, art exhibitions and I was like, oh, I'm just going to see what happens. And, you know, of course, I was disappointed because I wouldn't get into them. But, you know, I'm failing 100 times. I'm just go, go, go. But what I found along the way before I got to 100 was I don't when I, the ones I got into because I did get into some. I didn't belong. I, I could like my art when I look next, put it next to somebody. It's like this does not this is not I don't fit in here. This I don't belong. This is not these these exhibitions are not for me because my art doesn't really fit in here. And that was huge to learn, like, because I thought that was the ultimate, like, get into an art show and then your art seen by people. And, you know, it, it, and that's fine if that's what you want to do. And I thought I wanted to do that. But what I learned along the way was that isn't what I want to do. So that was part of, but I would never have no, learned that. I would have always just thought I wanted that if I hadn't said, I want to, I want to fail a hundred times. So part of, um, part of, you know, being creative and pursuing it and, and going forward is being willing to fail, to maybe even be embarrassed. But guess what? Most people aren't watching. I'm going to tell you right now. Okay. So like, you know, um, for example, on social media, the first time you post, you, you're so nervous because you was like, oh, no, nobody's watching. Nobody looks. And, and if they do, they like it. And that's the end of it. And maybe they don't look at all. Maybe they don't like it at all. But it's not, there's nothing to be embarrassed about because no one, er, no one's looking. So, for example, this year I decided I was going to do um, the, you know, because I did no more of these art exhibits. I mean, I, I, I would do one, but 
you know, I'm not like pursuing it actively, but I, um, I decided I wanted to do YouTube videos because guess what? What, I, what do I really want to do? What did I learn from, a, from, you know, failing at the art exhibits was that what I really want to do is just share. I want to share my creative process. I want to share how I do things. I want to give a, ba a hand back to the person behind me and say, come along, come along, come with me. But I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't set out to fail and maybe even be embarrassed, right? So I will say I have, I was embarrassed at a few of those art, art exhibits. I learned a lot and I, I, yeah. So, and I was embarrassed only because I didn't feel like I fed, fit in. I felt embarrassed because I had invited people to come and they could see I didn't really fit in. And, um, you know, that's just how it goes. But unless you're willing to fail, you're never going to, you know, be willing to kind of continue on whatever your journey happens to be. Um, the next thing is, uh, it's, I don't know if it's a limiting belief, but it's something like, I'm going to, I'm not inspired right now and I don't feel it. And, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, most of the time I don't feel it. And it's like, I have all these big things. I, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. But you know what I, what it really is, is it's resistance. And um, there's a book, Stephen Pressfield wrote this book, The War of Art. And I'm telling you right now, like there is a huge pushback around doing the thing that you love doing. Like, why? Why is that? It just, you have to kind of just do it. So for example, like on this, I need to just get a, you know, a, a thing of paint and just go for it. Or I need to get a brush or a pencil or a oil pastel or a soft pastel, something to make some marks. Because the minute I get momentum going, I'm good. I think it's, I don't know if it was the Picasso quote, you know, uh, about inspiration has to find you working or something like that. Like it, it, it exists, but you, it has to find you working. Like, whew, that's why there's warm ups. That's why, you know, you, sometimes you can't just jump into it like an athlete, you know, they ha you have to warm up. So whether it's painting circles or making marks or doing something really simple, because then once for me anyway, once I get going, like I'm going, I, I'm, ex I'm jazzed. But it's sometimes like, ah, how, why is it the thing I love doing? I have so much resistance around. So I think that's really common. Um, but you can't let it stop you. It's like you can't wait like, oh, I'm not inspired. You know, it's like, mm, yeah, you're probably not going to be. And guess what? It, you know, it's not going to find you on Pinterest. Although, I, I mean, I do that too. You know, I want to look on Pinterest and get some ideas. I want to watch the YouTube videos and get inspired. But we can get really stuck there because then we don't take that next step. Like, oh, I see this really cool thing on Pinterest and I want to learn how to do that. Or I want to, you know, use those colors in something. Or I want to watch one more YouTube video because it's just so fun to watch someone else versus actually doing the work ourselves. So don't be fooled um, and don't let that limiting belief of, you know, I have to be inspired to get started. No, you need to just get started. So another limiting belief, um, and I just have a couple more, is, you know, I don't have time um, or it's too selfish to spend the time. Now, this is huge for me and it has been the entire time that I, um, that I've kind of been on this creative journey. Because when I started at 50, I had kids in college I had kids in high school. Um, I have a daughter currently. I mean, I, that has disabilities that I that I caretake for. I have a part time um, business. Um, you know, so I have a fa I have th things going on. Um, I'm involved in. You know, I like to do volunteer work, and I'm involved in our church. And you know, there's a million things that could say. You know, you don't have time. This is not a good use of your time. Uh, you're being selfish or whatever. So. I guess what I want to say is, and, and I struggle with this, even to this day when, you know, I have only have one child at home now and, you know, my life is a little bit more freed up, but I will say I'm a better person when I am um, being my creative self. It bring it does something for me inside. And I'm guessing for you too, when we use that part of our creativity to, um, it just feeds into our soul. It just brings it brings us joy and it should anyway i mean obviously there's times when we're frustrated when we we want something to look a certain way and it doesn't but that's part of practicing and just doing a little bit every day so i would just encourage you if you're really struggling with that to say okay cuz for for so long it was like well can't make art cuz i don't have 3 hours well yeah you're never going to have 3 hours i mean sometimes you're going to have 3 hours 
But if you're waiting for an opportunity or permission or for someone just to open it up and say, here's your, here's the gift of three hours, it's probably never going to happen. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for this gift of time to appear out of nowhere and it's just not going to happen. So I have really learned to, um, take advantage of like a little bit. The other night I was on a, I, um, there was an author's a uh, talk that I had signed up for. It was virtual. And so while that was going on, I got my book art journal and, and uh, just made marks while this was going on because it was like, I hadn't had made it, any art in a couple of days. And I just felt like I, I just wanted to do something. And there's always a time. I mean, you know, obviously that wasn't some kind of, you know, I wasn't, wasn't crazy making art, but I could do it without the mess of paint and whatever, and still be listening and then kind of making these marks. So I would just encourage you to find the little pieces of time that you have and, you know, don't, don't guilt yourself, um, which I'm prone to do for being, for taking a little bit of time for yourself because it, it will make a difference. It makes a difference in like your heart and your soul and who you are as a person. So I would just highly encourage you to take those little, those little bits and pieces of time when you do, when you have a chance. So the last thing, um, and these are, we're in no particular order. And I, obviously I went off on tangents that I didn't mean to, but I'm pretty passionate about, you know, like wanting people to continue on. And, um, one of the other limiting beliefs, at least that I have had is that my art doesn't have any meaning or value. Okay. Um, and you know, and maybe that's true, but uh, to me, it does, right? So every mark that I make is unique to me. Every color choice I make is unique to me. So art is all about making a choice here, a choice there, a choice here, a choice there. So yeah, maybe my um, art is visionary in the fact that I'm making a statement about something in um, our culture or society or political. It isn't that way. But what I have found is that if I make the art that is true to myself, that even if it's just meaning for me, you know, maybe no one else ever experiences the meaning for it, but I'm going to share a couple things that have, have happened to me that, um, I had an abstract piece. It was an, just at an art walk, which is, you know, like it was a, a, a wine tasting room and he let me, I had all my art. I had like 30 pieces up. It was just the most amazing experience. But this friend of a, of a friend came and she said to me, on one of these abstract pieces, which you can call abstracts with whatever, you know, she said to me that piece, um, that was in a dream I had, like I dreamed something like that with those circles, with that image. And she said, and I was going through a really hard time. I was going through a divorce and to see that it was just, you know, pretty amazing. Now I wish she hadn't lived in New York. I wish I actually knew her. I probably would have given it to her. That is why I make art because you know what? There is one person out there that it might connect with. And if so, I mean, like I said, I would have given it to her if I could, if I, if she didn't live across the country. Um, but it does connect with people. It, we don't know how, we don't know what's going to resonate, you know? And the other thing I want to say is a lot of my, um, my portraits are, of, well, they're all of women and various things, but I almost always collage underneath so that the, um, Nothing smooth, so nothing can be perfect. And um, the I I a lot of the initial um, portraits that I did that like that I called them they were part of my scar series, which was we all have scars. Some are seen, some are unseen, and the texture underneath the face, you know, you you step back and you really couldn't see it, but you come in closer and you could see that the face had was was not perfect. It was it didn't have. There was lines and weird texture underneath and all of that. And I guess for me, that is huge meaning because I feel like um, as a woman, there's all kinds of scars. As a person, as a human, we all have baggage and scars that we carry. So did I initially start painting thinking, oh, I'm going to make these, abs these um, kind of figurative or portraitures that are going to have collage underneath and it's going to, no, it evolved out of that. Like the meaning came later. I didn't go into it going, these are going to be the scar series and it's going to be blah, blah, blah. It's going to have so much meaning, but it had so much meaning. And I was able to really talk about it. And I could talk to people and say, this is, 
this is what it is because, but it was only through the process of painting it and doing it that there was meaning. So anyway, those are limiting beliefs and some things that I wanted to talk about and share with you and encourage you to, you know, let go of those or reframe the, the, I know there's a million limiting beliefs out there. These are just the ones that I have dealt with. Um, so I wanted to share and kind of talk about, but you know, there, I would challenge you to write those out, reframe them, write them in a different way um, and put them aside so that they do not hinder or continue to hinder you on your path. Will they flare up? Absolutely. Does it continue in my own life? Absolutely. But now I feel like I have a little bit more awareness. Um, and I have, when I'm really like resistive or I'm feeling like, oh, uh, you know, I kind of, I know what's going on. I can at least address it or think about it or write about it, which I do. Um, you know, I do a lot of journaling. And uh, so anyway, I just, I hope this is encouraging you uh, along your creative journey. And I hope that you will not fall prey to um, you know, limiting beliefs that can hold you back from being the special, unique, and creative person that you are.